Sports Buddies, hello and welcome to another week on the channel. It's felt like a long weekend. Uh, I hope you've all stayed safe. I hope you stayed indoors during the horrible weather and watched uh, a man whose roots is in Crane Green Balls winning the Indoor Balls World Championships. Well done, Mark Dawes. Always, always nice to see a nice local chap winning one of the big prizes in the indoor game so thanks for joining me today and remember guys if you enjoy this video please hit that like button and if you're not already a bulls buddy and a member of this community of ours please hit the subscribe button it's absolutely free of charge and don't forget to hit the notification bell for notifications of new content on the channel which is currently three times a week and today it's another troll through the bowler's world archives the magazine that well highlighted the fall sorry the rise and then the subsequent fall of our favorite sport crown green bowls uh, and the issue i'm going to look at today is the last January issue ever uh, produced, which was January 2009, issue 341. And who would, nobody knew at the time, but this was the last year the Bowlers World would be in existence. December 2009 would be the last issue. And unfortunately then, disappeared from news well i think it already disappeared from news agent shelves by then but i know subscriptions were down to below 800 i think so about the same number of people used to buy it as are probably going to watch this video which um it's pretty sad really if you think about it 800 it's about one percent of the current bowls population um and of course people had got used to results competitions etc being advertised on the internet um already a month out of date when it comes out it's no surprise that that uh, the bowlers world disappeared but like i said in the intro it certainly was there to capture all the good things that happened in the game and unfortunately captured a lot of the negative things that was happened towards the end of its run uh do you like the top by the way a uh, little training top for all the liverpool fans that might be watching <coughs> anyway i don't like to talk about football on a balls video but you know the clarets and all that so on the front page there were uh, two photographs, one of a group of holidaymakers in Saratosa, Florida. Sounds nice, mate. And the other was uh, a photo of two lovely bowling greens, a clubhouse and a golf course. That was the Amanduera Golf Club uh, over in Portugal. And... It, was, it said crown bowlers to open new Algarve green and uh, a flat green and a crown green had been built um, next to the Amanduera clubhouse uh, and I was fortunate enough to be one of the people invited to go along on the trip um, for the grand opening and what a trip that was it didn't actually happen until March uh, but wow uh, honestly, probably the best week of balls I've ever had in my life. It was a like it was another being on another planet. It was wonderful. I know a lot of people went in subsequent years. Uh, it was opened up and run as, as sort of a festival, and and I don't think anyone had any uh, complaints about about the standard of accommodation, about the well the greens were unbelievable uh the clubhouse was just immense and uh it was a wonderful wonderful time and I'm, and I'm sure that it's it was only a sign of a of a bigger problem with the game that it really didn't take off like it probably should have done um 
it cost about the same to go there and stay for a week as it did to go to the Isle of Man. Um, where would I rather be, the Algarve or Douglas? <clears throat> no offence to the Isle of Man uh, people out there who are watching, but it was amazing. And I'm, I know a lot of people that went on those trips would agree. Alas, it's now um, a putting green for the golfers to warm up on. I'm not sure if the flat green is still there or not. It wasn't flat, it was like playing on Garswood Hall, but uh, it was flat for them. Um, yeah, happy times. We stayed We stayed in uh, Playa de Luz, uh, Praia de Luz, sorry, and we were shipped in every day like uh, professional sportsmen. Absolutely incredible. Uh, really, really, really happy memories of that place. And you wouldn't believe the green fees that members there were paying. It was, you know, 500 pounds, 500 euros plus to be a member there. Uh, of the, just of the bowling club for a year. I can't imagine that ever happening in this country. Um, last thing on the front page, price £1.30, £1.30 a month. And uh, on the inside page, uh, price increase deferred. Given the current economic climate, it's been decided to defer the proposed £1 subscription increase planned for this month. So they were going to put it up one pound more for the 12 issues. And they put it off because they thought it might. Yeah, anyway, that's another thing altogether. Um, on to page three. By this point, I was writing a monthly column for the Bowlers World just putting my thoughts about various things down on paper and, and this month was about a challenge match I had with Gareth Gwillem um, at the time we were playing a lot of golf together, good friends uh, but I had no idea he supported that clown shirt wearing mob down the road in blue and white halves and we had a little challenge game uh, on the carpet at uh, Chaddy Cot because we both played there in the Winter League he was unbeaten, I'd lost one um, and I threw this challenge out and whoever lost had to wear the other team's shirt for the day. I'm not sure I could have gone through with it, but fortunately it didn't happen. I managed to win 21-17 and I have a photo of Gareth in the Burnley shirt, which gives me lots of pleasure when I look back on it uh, and I'll put that up whichever side it comes up on and uh, happy days happy days and also on that page next to it is a picture of myself uh, at the champion of champions with a little little pal of mine uh from back in the day joe dickin uh from down in the in the west midlands uh it was only a little dot of a of a, of a lad at the time uh, how old was he 2009 It'd have been maybe five, or five, six, um, and it was just uh, we had half an hour on the Waterloo plane, and uh, wow, what a player! What a player he was at that age. Uh, I haven't seen much of him uh, since the Junior All England a couple of years ago down in Derbyshire. Um, I don't think he got too far, but that's the last time I saw him play. Um, Hopefully we'll get back to it when we all can and, and hopefully get get back playing and uh, recapture that form that he had when he was a little, little dot of a lad. Uh, page five. Nice photo of Gary Ellis and his mum and dad. Um, and Arthur Land had made a list of... Um, Players who had won competitions with a thousand pound or more prize money over the last three years, and top of the tree was Gary Ellis with 22 wins in three years, which is pretty good, pretty good going by anyone's uh, imagination, really. Second was Graham Wilson, and he'd, he'd only won 21 in three years. Um, and then who was it? Let's have a look. Andy Cairn sits in third place on 11 wins, which for me is amazing. I only used to maybe win one or two a season uh, if I was lucky. Um, 
from the age of 15 I've managed to win at least one competition a season uh, what am I now 47 so 27 years 27 years uh, well I've won I've won quite a, a bit more than 27 comps I can assure you uh, Simon Cope was 4th on 10 and Lee Lawton and Andy Sprague were 5th on 9 so it was uh, there's a big gap between Gary Graham and the rest of us uh, and when you look at some of the competitions that had been won some are still going some have unfortunately gone by the wayside um, but there was a substantial amount of money back then a lot a lot of things you know a lot of uh, money still in the game in 2009 not as as big in, as as the mid 90s but certainly quite a lot of big comps um entry fees had started creeping up at this point but there was still decent prize money to be won and there wasn't a lot else in this episode in this episode in this issue a lot of adverts for competitions uh, a few competitions from results and photos from the end of the previous season but there was a lot of you know federation focus talking about um, the AGM there's a section on looking back at, uh, at previous years um, on page 10 though there was the full uh, final tables for the Murfield and District Bowling League and I think I've said in previous years I think this is the head and shoulders the best league in the country and I know that there's Midlands Premier League and what have you but you know the first division especially the first division in the Murfield League is different grade you, you you're playing county games without practice away from home um, on difficult greens all the greens tend to be difficult as in fact the easiest one's probably Thongsbridge but there you go uh, and it was interesting to know in 2009 top of the tree was Spen Victoria and I think they might be in the third division now um, runners up Brighouse third Thongsbridge and that was their first year in the first division um, and Thongsbridge have gone on uh, leaps and bounds since then won it four times i think four times yeah um beating lower hopton uh who finished fourth um also in the league with dern sports they're still in the top league morton house they've dropped down a couple of divisions alverthorpe i think they did pretty well in the second division. not sure if they came up netherton cons they've they've gone down the divisions osset flying horse they're, they're still in the top flight. Murphy Old Bank finished bottom, so they would have got relegated. But looking in the in the Division Two, Little More, they're back up in the in the top league. Crossgates, they're one of the big boys now in the top league. Um, and you've got to go down Pudsey. They're in Division Three at the time. They're they're former winners and and always competitive. And Crossland Moor were down in Division 4 and they're currently in the top flight as well. So it just shows that very competitive league um, and anyone that really wants to you know, try and improve the game, if you can get playing in, in the Murfield League, um, you'll certainly help your chances of, of improving. And at the time, there were 10 divisions with 10, play 10 uh, teams in each, 10 players per division so a thousand bowlers which is you know not an insubstantial number in one league um and i think that's all i'm going to talk about nothing else has leapt out on me when i think back to 2009 uh apart from the amandwera thing in portugal it all seemed a bit not a lot happening um, and I'm sure there was memory tends to fade and, and what have you um, normally there would have been a, um, something in about the panel Christmas handicap but that uh, that wasn't in the, there was a, a, a panel premier players playoff 
I don't know if that was instead of or whatever, I can't just think. Uh, but uh, Neil Jenkinson finished top of top of the tree in that. Um, and there's not a lot else. On the inside page, awful lot of competitions, cut out and keep guide. Um, one I've just seen here, £2,240 Tommy Braddock open at Totty Cons. That doesn't happen anymore. Um, one of my favourite greens, that's that's gone. They use it as a beer garden now. Um, but before I go, uh, I'm going to put a little clip on of a new segment that I, I watched on YouTube a couple of days ago. And it's actually about a bowls club in Sydney. Um, and it's interesting that it's not just us and Crown Green Bowls and this country that we're where clubs are struggling same in australia too just have a look at this it's only a couple of minutes long um and see what you think yet another sydney bowling club is going under the hammer closed down and up for sale one of many at risk from low membership and high costs while occupying prime real estate but they are not giving up without a fight it's been more than a year since these greens saw their last bowl. The bar served its last beer and a centre for social life since the late 1950s fell silent. On a busy intersection in Eastwood, the former Brush Park Bowling Club, almost a hectare and a developer's dream. Very rare, unique. You don't see this sort of property come up on the market um, in this area especially. The club combined with nearby Carlingford after struggling with costs and ageing infrastructure like many others. A lot of pressure on those clubs in particularly in inner uh, metropolitan areas where the population's absolutely changing and uh, membership you know, de declining. Brush Park joins a growing list of Sydney's lost bowlers. Over the past 10 years, close to 100 clubs have been amalgamated, closed down. But still there are plenty of others fighting to stay in the game. Sydney's oldest bowling club, Balmain, was on the brink, but after amalgamation, renewed, as the sport pushes new games for younger players and barefoot bowls. It's a great game, you know, have a couple of drinks, have a bite to eat, barefoot bowls. As Brush Park is set to be auctioned off to its fate. The clubs that are in the fight are getting stronger, and they're not going to give up. Paul Kadak. Fantastic! Seven News. So there you go, a Bulls club in Sydney that was doing really, really well. One of the oldest clubs in Sydney. Merged, had to merge with another club just to stay afloat and looking like another green's gone. And they had, did they say a thousand, thousand greens in Sydney? Wow, that's a, that's a lot. Um, but they had three greens prime real estate and unfortunately I can see a lot of clubs over here going the same way when they realise you know what they've got um, and how many houses you can get on a bowling green we can only hope that that doesn't happen and we can only hope that we bounce back after this really difficult time um, thanks for watching today thanks for tuning in uh, i'll be back on wednesday with ac talking balls and my review of the balls line laser measure um i've not been able to get on a bowling green though this weekend because of the snow uh, but i've done a little bit of filming in the back garden um and it's yeah it's okay it's okay uh but you'll see the full review on wednesday and you will also see on friday the 1994 bass masters final i've had a few people messaging me going when are we going to see the final patience my dears patience it will be friday guys thanks for watching thanks for uh letting me in your homes and entertaining you um Join me on Wednesday for a little bit more talking balls. Uh, and until then, guys, remember, keep your masks on, stay safe. Um, and I hope to see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.